I just want to get some thoughts tonight. And we're talking about your family. I don't know if this is a generational curse or what. My daughter, she went through her suffering with me. Right? She just got married a couple of weeks ago, which a lot of people think was premature. The same day of the wedding, the man fell. It got so bad that me, two other women, and my daughter had to lay on him to try to cast out the demon that was in him. He went to the church. The whole church prayed for him. They found out he drank two bottles of rubbing alcohol. Wow. He's an alcoholic. He's in jail now. My daughter's three months pregnant. The flesh side of me wants to hurt him. But the spiritual side of me, I guess I brought this up because now she's addicted to him, and now I'm addicted to her. It consumes me all day long about my daughter. Is she okay? Is she going to be okay? I have his son, which is now my grandson, living with me, and he's getting exposed to church, but if, this, if the father doesn't come through, he's going to fall away and go back to the Bronx. So I sit home, and thank God for Roy, because he literally has to get me out of it, just to keep my, my mind, you know? But this thing is going around in a circle. And I sit there outside and I say, Lord, I can't take it no more. I just can't take it. No more. Oh, man. I just said it because, I mean, you know, the whole church prays. You anoint them with oil. I don't know what it's going to take. I don't want him to hurt my child. You know? But I'm running out of options. Prayers and righteous and righteous and righteous. And I apologize. Right? I'm not trying to apologize for that. That's why I'm just saying. No apology needed. I just, I mean, I know we all have problems. But if I don't have my brothers and sisters to go to now, if I do something stupid because I, I'm torn. I'm like, well, if I hurt this man, one of us is dead, the other one in jail. How is that going to help my life? You know? But I can't let him hurt my child. We'll learn. We'll just learn. Right. 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 So it's just something, you know, for, for everybody. We're going to we're gonna definitely get an agreement yes, with you, bro. Right. Yes. Yes. We're going to get an agreement with you tonight mm -hmm. uh, before the night is over. Right. We're going we're gonna, to um, mm -hmm. stand with you, yes. you know, that yes. God would intervene in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I just I just I knew this was, I was going to split up. We were going to split up tonight. And, um I was gonna take the men and share this with the men, and um, so y'all, you know, y'all thank Carl for coming out tonight because okay, Carl not come out tonight. We would split up and just the men would have got this, but it's really something that everyone need needed to hear. I believe. Any other thoughts about what we were sharing about the family tonight in codependence? I I have a burden for a younger brother, and I set some bad examples for him. And now his daughter is uh, in jail, and her son, she may, he'll probably be a teenager when she gets out of jail. That's a burden. That's a burden. Things that we do that we don't even know. We don't, either we don't care for we're saved, Well, no, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at today. I want to stand with you too, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Want to stand Bobby, with you too. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Please share. This is a, I wanted, you know, this was going to be shared in a more intimate setting with the men. You know, um, if you feel something needs to be said with the camera off, I mean, this this is this is the atmosphere Amen. right here. <clears throat> this is the time to get some of these things and share some of these things. Because I I feel you know even when when I was sharing, I just felt the heaviness. I see it. I see it. 
on some people even right now. But I'm not gonna press, you know, I'm not gonna press anyone to share with it. Yeah, I, I was only I'm only child for, for my, my dad died, he was the last little parent I had. You know, now that you mention this and bring this up, I really never thought about it like that, nor saw that, but I could see it now. I see in the past how my dad was always there. He always kept trying and he was like you said, like my crutch. He always, I mean, I was 30 something years old. I lived in a rooming house and my dad was paying my rent and I had a good paying job, but he was always there. That made me think that he was always thinking about me and worrying about me every night. He said, well, son, I don't want you to come to my house because I don't want to live in my house because I don't want to worry about you. Even though I wasn't living in his house, <clears throat> I knew, you know, now, now I know this, today I know this that he was worrying about me. That's why every time, coming around rent time, which was $130 a month, he was always there. So that let me know that my dad was always, he was caught up in my mess. You know, and like I said, I'm the, you think the only, your only child, you know, my, my mother was deceased, it was just my dad and I. And he would do whatever he could. I mean, he would go broke mm -hmm. to try to, <laughs> to get me to, to do the right thing. So, you know, I guess I, I didn't realize that until now. And my dad's been dead for almost 15 years now. But, you know, it, some, like I said, sometimes God will reveal things to you later in life, you know. Yeah. And I just thank God for reveal for that. But, you know, my dad was a good, my dad was a good man.